Welcome to an overview of the ASCE 716 code changes. Over the course of 2020, municipalities across the U.S. will be adopting the 2018 International Building Code. The old 2015 International Building Code used ASCE 710, the prior version of design guidance for PV systems, provided by the American Society of Civil Engineers, as the basis for the design of structures, including seismic, snow, and wind loads. Currently, most authorities having jurisdiction, or AHJs, are still relying on ASCE 710 guidelines for their permitting. However, 2020 marks the implementation of the 2018 International Building Code, updated with ASCE 716. Adoption of the new codes is on the horizon, and we want to make sure you and your colleagues are ready for it. The ASCE code has evolved significantly over the years. For example, 710 did not provide solar-specific provisions about the wind pressure calculations. Designers and engineers were relying on existing provisions from the components and cladding section, and wind pressures were based on the roof surface alone, with no consideration for a solar system on top of it. 716, on the other hand, has become more specific, with regards to solar systems, with new data being obtained from wind tunnel testing. One new discovery to come about is the observation of decreased wind pressures between the upper and lower surfaces of the solar array. And another discovery being the observation of increased wind pressures caused by roof edges and large gaps on the roof. ASCE 716 has new, solar-specific provisions that come from wind tunnel testing. The Structural Engineers Association of California have various resources and PV2 reports available for those of you who want to dig into the details. To summarize, the focus of this research was to assess the wind-induced pressures on flush-mounted and tilt-mounted PV systems in order to understand their impact. We've placed links to these and other resources on the 716 landing page at ironridge.com slash ASCE 716. One of the major discoveries found from this wind tunnel testing included pressure equalization. It turns out that when you incorporate a solar system on a roof, you create a barrier which creates a pressure equalization between the lower surfaces of the array and the top surfaces. The pressure differential between the two actually counteract the uplift forces, ultimately decreasing the net wind pressures. Another discovery was that there were effects from roof edge and large gaps in the array. These increase net wind pressures. In a side-by-side -side comparison of how the two codes impact solar design parameters, you can see that nothing has changed in terms of snow loads, exposure categories, or risk categories. However, there's been some reduction in the wind speed maps for the majority of the U.S. When we get into roof type, 716 separates roof profiles into hip and gable, each with their own unique method for determining wind pressure. And roof slope categories have changed in that there are more of them. ASCE 716 also introduced the concept of exposed modules and provided some design guidance around them. Iron Ridge is adding the additional consideration of edge modules, and we'll get into the difference between the two shortly. Let's compare the wind speed maps. On 710, you can see that most states had the same wind speed with a lot of lines near the coastal southeast. On the 716 map, wind speeds were actually reduced for the most part. But the hurricane-prone regions in yellow remain the same. There was no reduction in wind speeds there. The gray shaded areas on the map represent case study areas by local jurisdictions where the wind speeds can fluctuate a lot because of geographical features and elevation. It's always important to check with your AHJ to find out what the actual wind speeds are in those areas. Let's review a few key definitions before we continue. This is a gable roof. It consists of two pitched or sloping sides, which meet along the roofline ridge and are open at the end. The vertical wall at the end of the structure between the sides of the roof is known as the gable. The rake is a term that describes the sloped sides of a gable end. The rake can be flat with no overhang, 
or it can hang over the gable end like an eave. This is a diagram of the new roof zones on a gable roof. Zone 1 remains unchanged from 710 to 716, but zones 2 and 3 have been further segmented into 2E, 2R, 2N, 3E, and 3R. A hip roof, or hipped roof, is a type of roof where all sides slope downwards to the walls, usually with a fairly gentle slope. This is a diagram of the new roof zones on a hip roof. Zones 1 and 3 remain unchanged from 710 to 716, but zone 2 has been further segmented into 2E and 2R. If you're familiar with our certification letters, then you know that we typically provide a maximum rail span for each roof zone. And with all these new roof zones, that could get complicated pretty quickly. However, we were able to analyze the wind pressure coefficients and group those zones. This simplifies things by organizing the zones into three groups. This table is from our cert letter span table, and it shows our grouping method for hip roof zones. As the roof pitch changes, you'll see that the grouping changes as well. And the same holds true for gable roofs. Wind pressure coefficients change when the roof pitch increases or decreases. That's going to be reflected in our certification letters. While the ASCE 716 code doesn't specifically mention edge modules, they do include the expectation that there will be an offset of the array from the roof edge, specifically two times the height of the array. But we understand that installers, when allowed, may find it necessary to install arrays as close to the roof edge as needed, so we wanted to provide guidelines for them to do so. By using existing provisions within the code, non-solar specific, we were able to calculate allowable span values for this region, filling a void left by the code. A conservative approach was taken so the spans in these areas are sometimes significantly less when compared to interior or exposed module spans. In this illustration, you can see the wind direction coming up over the roof. For the purposes of our example, we made the array height 5 inches. That means that any modules less than 10 inches from the edge of the roof are edge modules. Wind coefficients on edge modules increase in these areas. Another term to get familiar with is exposed modules. For a module to be considered exposed, two things have to be true. Number one, the distance from the module's free edge to its facing roof edge is greater than half the building height. And number two, the distance from the module's free edge to an adjacent array or panel is greater than four feet. This rule applies regardless of pitch or type of roof. In the illustration, you can see that there's a gap in the middle of the array. If the gap is large enough, then the wind can come down, reattach to the roof, and disrupt this pressure equalization under the array. That increases the wind pressure for that module. Or, if there's enough distance between the edge of the roof and the edge of the array, then the wind can reattach to the roof, continue on, and disrupt the pressure equalization that's happening under the array. This increases the wind pressure in this area. Iron Ridge will be providing sealed letters as the states move from 710 to 716. Currently, there are new letters for Arizona, California, Colorado, Georgia, Maryland, Missouri, New Jersey, Nevada, New York, Oregon, Pennsylvania, South Carolina, Utah, and Puerto Rico. If you're in a state where there aren't letters yet, but your AHJ is ahead of the curve, contact support at ironridge.com and we can provide a site-specific letter. The main intention of the CERT letter is to define rail spans. They also specify which code versions the calculations comply with. They're sealed by a structural engineer and available on ironridge.com. The letter contains a 12-page table and is 23 pages in total. We have a separate set of span tables for hip roofs and gable roofs. You can locate new 716 letters on our website on the pitched roof Documents and Resources page. These letters are also available in Design Assistant. The first paragraph of the letter provides a description of the system and its application. Then we list relevant code references. 
And finally, a list of design considerations, parameters, and allowed adjustments. Each table is based on the rail XR10, XR100, or XR1000. And there are different tables for gable and hip roofs, module size, and exposure category. What's new is color coding for quick reference. Green is for spans of at least 72 inches, blue is for spans of at least 64 inches, and orange is 48 inches and up. We added this table here in the lower left to show how we've grouped the roof zones and how the groupings change as the roof pitch increases. We also added in a roof zone map from ASCE 716 and some advice on how to determine these dimensions. Okay, we know that that's a lot of information to digest. So here's a summary of impacts that solar designers will contend with. If you're installing in a low wind, low snow state like California, Arizona, New Mexico, or Nevada, and you've standardized on four foot spans, there will be little to no impact on your designs. If you're maximizing your spans in those states to six feet, there could be an impact, but minimal. If you're in a low wind, high snow state like Colorado, Utah, Massachusetts, or New Jersey, then your designs could be impacted. Some projects will require additional attachments or opting for XR100 over XR10 to maximize spans. If you're in a high wind, low snow region like Texas, Florida, Puerto Rico, or the Carolinas, you will encounter the greatest impact. Installs with edge and exposed modules could necessitate moving from XR10 to XR100 rails. It may be possible to offset cost of rail with a reduction in attachments, but those determinations are site specific. In high snow load areas like New Hampshire, where installers are already choosing XR100, there shouldn't be much of an impact. In extreme environments like hurricane-prone Miami, the new code will have the most impact. However, Iron Ridge is a high-velocity, hurricane-zone-approved solar system. Check with your local AHJ to better understand the specific changes to make to your solar designs. Fortunately, we have a design tool that will make all of this a lot easier to tackle. This is a new version of Design Assistant, available now. You'll select 716 in the code drop-down field. And when you do that, you'll get some new drop-down menus for your roof. You can select the roof shape, gable or hip, and your roof slope. Design Assistant will handle those calculations for you. You'll also have an option to select exposed or edge modules with a checkbox. Then you get rows that will show you the spans for that condition. This is a lot more powerful than just using the span tables in the cert letters. Design Assistant is more accurate and will let you fully leverage the potential spans rather than rounding up with the table. The tool does not determine the roof zone areas and dimensions. You'll need to calculate the dimensions of your roof zones on your own. Also, it's important to note that the code specifies a maximum module length of 80 inches. Design Assistant includes some modules that are longer than that. If you have any questions, please contact our technical support team. If any issues or questions come up as you begin transitioning to ASCE 716, contact us at support at ironridge.com and we'll do our best to help get you the information you need. That's it for now. Thanks for joining and remember, we're always here to help.